The following program is produced by the Living Church of God. Billions of religious people pray to some higher power they call God. But do their prayers mean anything? Is anyone up there really listening? The Bible shows that prayer really makes a difference. You can get answers to your prayers if you genuinely act on the inspired instructions of your Bible. Do you want your prayers answered? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World This week, Richard Ames describes the power of prayer Warm greetings to you all. Millions of religious people pray every day. Perhaps you pray. Perhaps you've tried to pray and got discouraged because you didn't seem to get any answers. Maybe you say memorize prayers as a ritual and hope that some kind of superstitious obeisance to an unknown God will somehow keep you out of hell. Well, let's go to the source. The true God of the Bible and the creation is that source. And in His mercy... And in His kindness to tiny human beings, God has given us the gift of truth through this book we call the Holy Bible. But you've got to read it, and you've got to seek to have a relationship with its author, the Creator God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And when you do, you'll find the Bible gives us promises that money can't buy. Let's take a look at one claim of the Bible. It should give you a perspective that will help you in your prayer. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. It's one of my favorite scriptures out of hundreds of favorite verses in the Bible. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Listen to what the Bible claims God can do for you. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. What kind of problems do you have? Do you have health problems, financial problems, mental health problems, employment problems, family problems, social problems, academic problems? God can solve any problem you have. Of course, you have to do your part. But the Creator God has all power in the universe. He can give you dramatic deliverance, and He can give you help in miraculous ways. Now, if God is to help solve your problems and answer your prayers, what does He expect of you? Turn to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We call it the faith chapter because it illustrates what God did for men and women of faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. As you read the Bible and how God helped people and delivered them from gigantic stress and trials, you'll have more faith. Read the stories of Daniel in the lion's den, the deliverance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Read the escape of the ancient Israelites through the Red Sea. Read about the miracles performed by the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, in healing the disease, the blind, the lame, and the deaf. Read how Jesus raised the dead to life. It'll help give you faith and hope. The prophet Jeremiah gave the people of ancient Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken captive, he gave them hope. After they learned their lessons... God promised to respond to their humble prayer. Let's turn to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and verse 10. For thus says the Lord, After seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. 
then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. That same principle applies to you. You can have a conversation with the creator of the universe. He says you can find him if you seek him with your whole heart. You can pray and talk to him, and he says, I will listen to you. Isn't that amazing? How do you pray? I appreciate the training I had as a little boy. My parents taught me the bedtime prayer, which maybe some of you learned. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless Daddy, Mommy, Beverly, my sister, Skippy, my dog, Deet Deet, the cat, and then I prayed for my other relatives. I believe God heard my prayer, but as in so many cases, I never really learned the truth of the Bible until I was a young adult. And then it was difficult trying to pray for the first time in years. I had read an article on the power of prayer which suggested kneeling beside a bed and to begin talking to God in heaven. I remember looking up at the ceiling and wondering, is God higher than the ceiling? It was a defining moment because I had to search myself to realize, yes, God does exist, and I'm trying to acknowledge Him. I began to share my honest feelings, my desires and concerns, and that started a relationship which has lasted to this day, and that relationship has improved greatly over the years. You can pray, and you can get answers to your prayers. Let's turn back to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. God promises that if you seek Him sincerely, you will find Him. Notice the instruction here in Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God promises that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But you'll also have to acknowledge the existence of an all-wise, all-powerful Creator God who loves you and every human being on earth. Now let's see what the Bible teaches us and how to pray. Let's turn to Luke, the 11th chapter. After Jesus chose His disciples, they asked Him to teach them to pray. Luke 11 and verse 1. Now it came to pass, as He was praying in a certain place, when He ceased, that one of His disciples said to Him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught His disciples. What did Jesus teach them? He gave His disciples an outline of subjects to talk to God about. Luke 11 and verse 2. So He said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The first important statement we make in our prayer is to acknowledge who God is. He's our Father. The Apostle Paul describes this relationship in Ephesians, the third chapter, in verse 14. He states, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Do you know what God is doing? God is creating a spiritual family. He wants you to be a son or daughter. So you recognize Him as your heavenly Father. That's a very personal relationship. You may also want to acknowledge God as the Creator. King David often did that in his prayers. You can read the Psalms. You know, if you don't know what to pray about, just open your Bible to the book of Psalms. Many of the Psalms are the, hel the heartfelt prayers of David. He was very straightforward. He was very open and honest with God about his feelings, his anxieties, and his problems. And so can you share your feelings and your fears and your worries. But David stood in awe at the heavens and the expansiveness of the creation. Read Psalm 8, for example, or Psalm 18, Psalm 19, Psalm 24. So when you get down on your knees in prayer, you'll want to first acknowledge the greatness, the love, the power of God. You acknowledge His name, His authority, and His office. 
You'll want to acknowledge your relationship to him as a little child, a little child of the great, majestic, loving God and Father from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now, what is the next subject that Jesus gives us to pray about? In Luke 11 and verse 2, first of all, he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Number two, your kingdom come. Yes, the whole world needs the kingdom of God. It needs to be re-educated to godly values, to the way of life that produces joy and peace. And that is the way of God's law. Jesus will teach the whole world the true way of living, and that includes the Ten Commandments and their magnification and application. There's a way of love that produces right results. Every nation on earth needs that kind of education. When you pray for God's kingdom to come, think of all the reasons you want the kingdom to come. Our feature article in our new magazine, Tomorrow's World, is entitled, Seven Reasons Christ Must Return, written by Dr. Meredith. I hope you'll all get an opportunity to read that article. You'll want to request a free subscription to our new magazine, Tomorrow's World. And we'd also like to offer you a free audio tape of this program on the power of prayer. You'll be able to review the scriptures and principles of the answered prayer at your own leisure or as you're commuting to work. There's no cost or obligation. You need this free audio tape for your personal benefit and Bible study. Call or write today. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape entitled, The Power of Prayer. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free without any cost or obligation. If you call 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or write to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. In the first part of our program, we saw that God has unlimited power to help us in our trials, problems, and needs. We read in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. It's just that sometimes we think God is limited or He has no interest in our problems. But we also saw that God promised that if we seek Him with all our heart, we will surely find Him, and He'll listen to our prayers. We began to study the model prayer or the outline prayer Jesus gave. We must acknowledge the greatness of our Creator and our relationship to Him as He's our Father. We need to pray for the king and the kingdom to come on this earth. And we need to see the reality of the need for the kingdom to rule over this sick and violent world. The next subject Jesus gave us in the outline prayer is the subject of seeking to do God's will and not our own. Luke 11 and verse 2. Jesus taught us to pray, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My friends, this is an extremely important key to answered prayer. Human beings are by nature extremely selfish. The worldly view is one of lust and greed. We all have had, and maybe some of you still have, the get motive. Billions just want to satiate their lusts. They want their own way. It tells us in Proverbs 14.12 and Proverbs 16.25, There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But God's way, exemplified by Jesus of Nazareth, is the give way. Is that the way you pray? Do you pray for others before you pray for yourself? Pray for God's will to be done in your life. He knows what's best for us. When Jesus was in agony... The night before his crucifixion, he asked that the cup of suffering be passed from him, if it were God's will. Notice that in Luke, the 22nd chapter, and verse 42. Luke 22, verse 42. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. 
Jesus was willing to suffer for you and me. He surrendered His will to that of the Father's will. Let me tell you, when you're struggling over some problem or trial, ask for God's deliverance, but also pray that His will be done. Notice that God strengthened Jesus to endure the sacrifice He was about to make. You know, God also makes His will known to us in the thousands of promises He gives us in the Bible. You can claim those promises. Let's take a look at a couple of them. Philippians 4 and verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What do you have need of? Do you have need of food or clothing? Do you have need of a job? Then ask God, claim His promise, and of course we have to do our part. So, what did Jesus say? In Matthew, the seventh chapter, Jesus told us to ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. I've applied this many, many times in my life. As long as you're asking God's will to be done, He'll provide your every need as He's promised. There are some things we probably don't think of as needs, such as being put back on the right track when we've spiritually gone astray. Sometimes we need correction, and our Lord will give us the guidance we need to get back on the right track. Now, sometimes that's very painful, but it's for our benefit. Read the Correction with Love chapter, Hebrews the 12th chapter. You'll benefit from it. Now, in seeking God's will and experiencing the power of prayer, we need to have our priorities straight. What are your priorities in life? Do you know what your goal in life should be? We've covered the subject of our amazing purpose and destiny on several of our programs. But let's take a brief look at Matthew, the sixth chapter, Matthew 6. And here, Jesus was emphasizing that God will provide all our needs. But what must we do first? Read it here in Matthew, the sixth chapter, Matthew 6 and verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What things? All the physical things humans need and often worry about because they don't believe God or trust God. Jesus chided his audience here in Matthew 6 and verse 30. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? We need to focus on the greatest goal of all. Jesus said in verse 33, of chapter 6 of Matthew, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. That's another one of God's wonderful promise to, promises to you. Now, as we seek the kingdom of God, we'll also be establishing that very intimate relationship with our Father in heaven and with His Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, God knows what we have need of, but He wants to help us to learn to trust Him and to be dependent upon Him. You know, even our currency has imprinted or engraved upon it, in God we trust. You know, another very basic principle in experiencing the power of prayer is this. Just speak from the heart. You don't need to get caught up in memorized prayers. They become vain and meaningless. In Matthew's account, Jesus warned about useless repetitions. Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse 7. Matthew 6 and verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Many different religions emphasize repetitious prayers, saying the same few words over and over again, or using prayer wheels or prayer flags that supposedly send a message from the petitioner to his unseen God. God says all of that's in vain. Remember, God expects that you want to have a personal relationship with Him. And since He knows your needs, simple requests may be all that's necessary. But one must be sincere and heartfelt. You may be familiar with John 10 and verse 10 where Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, Christians do suffer, and they experience many trials in life. But they have the power of Christ to help them endure. They also have the opportunity 
to recapture the true values of life and abundant living. So in addition to God's promise that He'll provide our every need, there's a special promise concerning the desires of our heart. Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 37, and here we find that there are desires that God will give us, but obviously they must be lawful desires if God's going to grant our request. Psalm 37 and verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. What an amazing promises. What are the desires of your heart? Again, the good and right desires of your heart. Let me give you a personal example. Back in 1967, I began to pray for one of the desires of my heart, and that was to travel to the Holy Land and visit the city of Jerusalem where Christ will establish the capital of the earth when he returns. Did God answer my prayer and give me the desire of my heart? Yes, he did, but not immediately. Year after year, I thought about the possibility of traveling to Jerusalem. I shared this desire with my Father in heaven. Do you know how long I waited? In 1984, 17 years after I began to claim the promise of Psalm 37.4, God gave my wife and me the opportunity to participate in an archaeological dig or excavation in the city of David, just south of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It was hard work, but it was a thrilling experience and an educational one as well. God gave me one of the desires of my heart, even though I had to wait a long time for it. God keeps His promises, but we must claim these promises with faith and with obedience. God wants you to pray to Him, to share your life with Him. And as we've seen, prayer changes things. It's your lifeline to God. But does God hear the prayers of sinners? Let's understand, one cannot continue to practice sin and think that God will hear his prayers. As the prophet Isaiah wrote, Isaiah the 59th chapter and verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. If you really want God's help to repent and change, then exercise the courage to step out and confess your sins personally and privately to God. Then God will help you. How do you know he will? Well, read the story of the Pharisee and the publican in Luke, the 18th chapter. Let's turn now to Luke 18, and starting with verse 9. Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus goes on to say, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. God will not hear the prayers of an unrepentant sinner, but he will hear your prayer if you're really sorry and you acknowledge your sinfulness. God heard the humble confession of a publican, just as the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a promise. It takes courage to admit your sins. But we all must humble ourselves and seek God with our whole heart. God tells us in Isaiah, the 55th chapter, turn back to Isaiah 55 and verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Remember, as we read in Ephesians 3 and verse 20, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Claim God's promises. Establish that lifeline of prayer. It will mean a new life for you in this age, 
in the promise of life for eternity through our living Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many, many more principles to understanding the power of prayer, such as thanksgiving, praying in the authority of Christ. We hope to cover more of them in future programs, but in the meantime, we urge you to call or write for a free audio tape of this program. You'll have the opportunity to study and review the principles, examples, and the scriptural references we've discussed today on the power of prayer. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape of this program. Just write or call for your copy of The Power of Prayer. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free without any cost or obligation. If you call 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or write to Tomorrow's World. P.O. Box 501304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. God gives us promises of answered prayer. Prayer is our lifeline to God. And as we've seen on today's program, there are principles that are lasting, principles that will help establish your personal and intimate relationship with God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. Just share your thoughts, your feelings, your worries, your anxieties, even your anger, and God will hear, and He will help you. In Isaiah 66 and verse 2, the prophet writes, For all those things my hand is made, and all those things exist, says the Eternal. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. If you humble yourself before God, he will answer your prayer. He'll come to your rescue. We hope you'll join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Dr. Meredith and I will continue to discuss the exciting truths of the Bible, truths you may have never understood. And in these days of fast-moving events, you need to understand what Bible prophecy says about your future and mine. Be sure to join us again next week, right here at this same time. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free without any cost or obligation if you call 1-800-934-5579 or write to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. Be sure to visit our webpage at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.